thank you for joining the session on time so welcome to the knowledge session on spring security presented by me krishna jaswal and my colleague asif ali so before moving on to the session we all must learn about knowledge etiquette the first one is punctuality we should respect knowledge session timing you are requested not to join session after 5 minutes threshold post the session start time feedback makes makes you to submit constructive feedback as it is very helpful for the presenter silent mode please keep your mobile devices in silent mode and feel free to move, move out of session in case you need to attend urgent call avoid disturbance please avoid unwanted chit chat during the session so these are the agenda of our session in this session we will talk about spring security what is auth 2.0 auth 2.0 rules how does it work and abstract protocol flow advantages of auth 2.0 and at last demo will be presented by us so what is spring security spring security is a framework which provide various security features like authentication authorization to create secure java enterprise application it is a sub project of spring framework which was started in 2003 by ben alex later on in 2004 it was released under apache license as spring security 2.0.0 this framework targets two major areas of application that is authentication and authorization we can apply authorization to authorize web request methods and access to individual domain what is auth 2.0 it is an authorization protocol and not authentication protocol auth is an authorization framework which allows limited access to protected resources on behalf of resource owner it delegates certain responsibilities to another server and enforces reusability it works on the concept of access to data now this is the simple example to explain how auth authorization takes place suppose we are new to hacker rank website then it will ask us to sign up and in that it will ask to give our name email address and password and also it is also giving another option to connect either login through facebook google linkedin or github and suppose we have an account on github then we will click over here and we will be redirected over github login page so there the pop up will be generated and it will ask us that hacker rank want to access your details like email address so and there is two options whether you want to authorize the hacker rank to access your details or you want to cancel so suppose we want to authorize we will click on authorize then our details will be shared to hacker rank and we will be logged in to the hacker rank website and we can do anything over there so or 2.0 rules so these are the jargons we need to understand because all the or 2.0 depends on this so the first one is resource owner second one client third one authorization server and the last resource server now what is the resource owner the resource owner is the user who authorizes an application to access their account the application access to the user account is limited to the scope of the authorization granted example read or write access so basically it is the user who actually owns protected resources on any resource server example if you own certain files on google drive then you are the resource owner for those protected files if you have an account on twitter facebook or gmail then you are the resource owner for the data that belongs to that account so resource owner is among the primary roles in auth flows as any authorization cannot be granted without consent of resource owner the second one is client the client is the system that requires access to the protected resources to access the resources the client must hold appropriate access to them so it is the third party application which is registered already with an authorization server and request access to protocol protected resources on a resource server on behalf of resource owner authorization server this server receives request from the client 
for access token and issues them upon successful authentication and consent by the resource owner. So it is responsible for providing authorization grant pool and access token to the client on behalf of resource owner. It's important to understand that authorization server issues access token on behalf of user only once, only once the user has been authenticated. Now the resource server. A server that protects the user resources and receives access request from client. It accepts and validate access token from client and returns the appropriate resources to it. So resource server is the server that hosts the protected resources for a resource owner. Any protected resources on a resource server are accessible only to the resource owner once authenticated or to any client application which has been granted access code by the resource owner by getting access token issued through authorization server. Now, how does it work? So let's assume the client requests authorization to access protected resources owned by the resource owner by redirecting the client to the authorization server. The resource access request is authenticated and authorized by the resource owner from the web application and the authorization grant code is returned to the client by an authorization endpoint. The client requests the access token for, from the authorization server by presenting the authorization grant returned from the authorized endpoint and authentication of its own identity to the token endpoint. Then the access token will be issued to the client for valid authentication and authorization grant by the authorization server or authentication provider. So by presenting the access token for, for authentication, the client can request the protected resources from the resource server. And at last the requested resources are written to the application with valid access token from the resource server. Extract protocol flow. So this is the graphical representation of how this flow takes place. So firstly, the client, that is application, will send authorization request to the user, that is resource owner. So after validating the client, the user, the user will send authorization grant to the application. After that, so these authorization grants are sent to the authorization server and on behalf of that access token will be returned back to the client. So the client user uh, send those access token to the resource server and ask for the protected resources. And after validating the, those access tokens, the protected resources are returned back to the client. Advantages of Auth 2.0 Auth 2.0 is a very flexible protocol that relies on SSL, that is secure socket layer. It ensures that data between the web server and browsers remain private to save user access to them. It has ability to share data for users without having to release personal information. It uses tokenization to give limited access to the user data. It is easy to implement and provide strong authentication. Now the demo will be presented by Asif. Asif, you can share the screen. Uh, Am I audible? Uh, yes, you are audible. I am not yes, yes, yes. getting out to answer my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. So let's move on to the demo part. So uh, from scratch. So uh, like, uh, 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 I hope you all are uh, uh, aware of, of that thing. So uh, here what i will do i just need to create an application from scratch so i will go like demo security
So uh, uh, as we are going through the Spring Boot application, so we just need to add the Spring Web dependency and the uh, second one is Spring Security and the final uh, that we will use like host to client. So let's create this application. Exact it wherever you want. Uh, I will open this in my IntelliJ. So it will take some time to load the project in my IntelliJ. So let's wait for it. So yeah. Uh, let's uh, create an application um, like uh, what uh, what is our uh, strategy here so we have an application like uh, home controller here i will first i will create a home controller so i will tell you uh, what we want to access so it would be a rest controller here and then uh, we have some mappings here uh, so uh, this uh, this mapping will return a home page so I will just return a string here. Like it will return a string. So uh, this URL should be accessible by everyone. So uh, who can access our website? So it will be accessible uh, with everybody. So now I need to create another uh, URL. So it would be like employees so it will return the data of employees so i will protect this url so i want to uh, let me create a class first employee so we have this class and we have some attributes here like employee has id and the name and email id yeah let me add some getters hope you all are aware of that part so this is the basic thing let me create a default character yeah so it would be our component now here um, this url will return the list of employees so employees and return i will uh, i will go hard coded here because um, uh, it will take time to go for the database so i i, I am uh, doing some hard coding things so uh, uh, employee has name and the id Second employee would be like Krishna. So uh, that's it. Uh, we have two employees. So uh, I need to, I want to protect this URL. So uh, now uh, let's move on to the uh, spring security config so i will configure uh, some uh, uh, methods here so i will create a uh, class config so i need to extend web security adapter here and give the annotation enable web security 
and now i will override some method so this class has some uh, method so i will override one method here like uh, this one configure as uh, security we just need this uh, method so Yeah. Yeah. Here some URLs like I want to access. Uh, I want this URL to be accessible by everyone. So I will provide the this URL and to, uh, permit it all the user. So we have another uh, URL like any request should be authenticated and then uh, we are doing like all login so we just need to provide this implementation and then uh, i will configure some uh, like application will provide provide some uh, configuration of my app so i need to go my uh, github account i need to create an uh, application here so i will create an app go to developer settings so it would be a auth apps here so i already have uh, two apps so i will create new for you so like our application name is demo auth you uh, home page would be like i have home page uh, localhost 8080 and you can provide application de descriptions here and the call, uh, call pick url would be the same so just register the application and then you will find the uh, client id that you, you need to uh, provide into the application or provide property so i have uh, uh, these values uh, let me paste it here so it will take time it, i will go for one line by line Basically, if you want to go for uh, like single sign-on for uh, 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 Google, then you can change this into Google. And if you want to go for Facebook, so uh, you just need to uh, replace this one. So here, I will provide the client ID here. So this is our client ID. And the, uh, uh, we need to uh, create a client secret. So we will generate this secret. Uh, let me... So as you can see, the uh, uh, client secret uh, generated successfully. So we will copy this one and provide the So uh, we are good to go and uh, uh, now I will just run this application. So our application is running successfully on edge port 8080. So let me show you. Like we have our application application on 8080 and we have the home page on uh, this url so it will uh, give the string here as you can see so we can access accessible so we can access this uh, uh, this page this home page so if i will uh, access employees url here so it will ask me to authorize so uh, i need to provide the credentials of my github account so you can pro uh, you you also can implement the google authentication and facebook authentication also so here we have only GitHub, so it will ask me to provide the GitHub credentials. So here I will provide my GitHub credentials here. Login in the into the application. So let me provide the OTP. So 
as you can see uh, 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 sometimes you see the uh, like uh, where uh, uh, you uh, do the application like single sign on then you probably you see this information like this application want to access these informations so i will authorize like i want to give the authority uh, like i want uh, to this application to uh, access my uh, information from github so i will authorize this so as you can see we can access this url now so uh, like uh, here what what is uh, like uh, going behind the scene like uh, the my application that i have created asking to the github to authorize that application and the github will provide the token to some specific uh, like roles or like uh, some specific authorities like you can access these uh, uh, information of this user so here basically uh, all the this is the all about the code too. Yes, also and the employees because we already logged in. So we can access the information of employees of uh, URL. So if you have any question here, you can ask. Hello. Anybody has any question? Uh, am I audible? Hey, you are audible. Yes, sir. Audible. So no one is having any question. That's fantastic. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> When you are requesting your resource uh, again, uh, after changing it back to home page to employees, the token, the access token that was returned, it is saved in cache and it's picked up again, or it's there something else? Yeah, uh, because we are going to like simple, so uh, it is going to cache and not this session because we, we have not implemented this session uh, thing right so uh if it is not session based so the default is request based right so uh or what yeah yeah request based so like uh if we have not uh, provided any implementation then spring security uh, uh, provide us like basic authentication so it will provide the uh, basic uh, like if i don't want to implement anything so it will uh protect all the URLs uh, by its uh, its side. So it will uh, protect all the URLs and provide the uh, a token, simple token that you will find into the console here. So we just need to like, uh, the uh, default user will be like admin, uh, sorry, default user will be user, username will be user and the password will be uh, provided here console. Yeah, right. Mm, okay. Yes. More questions? Yeah, I have one question. I'd like uh, you said Spring Security provides authentication and authorization. So what does that mean here? Like authentication, I, we can understand authentication, but what does it mean authorization? How does it provide authorization? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, we are uh, in today's session, we, uh, we all are not, uh, uh, talking about the authorization, not authentication. So basically, what is authentication? Authentication will uh, provide you like to authenticate particular a user to authenticate a user. So like if you are going through the authorization, then authorization will be in category like some roles and the authorities like uh, what type of permissions you you have to access this URL. So that is called uh, authorization and authentication like what you are, who you are. So th that is the authentication. Like you provide uh, username and and, and uh, uh, username and password, then uh, that is the authentication. And what you can access in that application, that is the authorization. Uh, 
So how can we provide authorization in our simple Spring Boot project with security? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, uh, if you talk about uh, default authorization, then there is uh, only single like user role. So uh, we need to uh, implement the authorization. Like if I want to go for the admin, then I need to provide the admin, uh, implement the for admin. So I will create a user and I will provide the role of admin to that user. Then we will go for that uh, admin part. More questions? Okay, seems uh, we are good to conclude, right? Yeah. So you people are getting my voice, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, fantastic. So I, thanks both of you. Lovely session. I enjoyed and I got enriched as well. Though though it was short, but I think it has uh, fulfilled uh, the need of agenda. And most of you also felt same, same as me. So again, thank you both of you. And I think we are good to conclude now. Thanks all of you so for, attending, for attending. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so, so much, Abhikya. And thanks everyone for us, uh, every one of us for being here. It was a lovely, lovely session, of course. And uh, we continue to celebrate the knowledge, of course, at all this. So thanks and have a good and great day ahead. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.